647 million years ago, 8.28 p.m. on our clock representing the Earth's history. The planet was buried under ice thousands of meters thick. Deep beneath the ice sheets, single-celled organisms, the only life on the planet, faced a stark choice, adapt or die. Bacteria that had evolved over two billion years seemed destined for extinction. Imagine if snowball Earth happened today. Could we survive? Temperatures would plummet way below zero, ice caps would spread out from the poles and engulf whole continents, violent snowstorms would paralyse entire populations. You could not run a nuclear power plant long enough to get through the snowball. Many experts believe we could find ways to live through a short-term ice age, but the odds of surviving a snowball Earth are next to nothing. If humans ever experience a snowball Earth, we will quite bluntly be out of control. There is no way we could stop it. It would be easier to live on the surface of Mars, probably, than on the surface of Earth during a snowball. Without food to eat or fuel to keep us warm, the ice covering the planet would become our tombstone. During Snowball Earth, the only living things were single-cell bacteria. Even their survival seemed improbable. But here we are. Life clearly did survive. The question is, how? The quest to learn how ancient organisms kept evolution alive has brought this lone microbiologist to Whiteout Glacier in southern Alaska. Here, Hazel Barton studies how life could have survived a global deep freeze. Her mission is to find signs of life in some very dead-looking frozen caves. People used to think that caves were devoid of life, that there was nothing in there. But it turns out they're actually teeming with microorganisms. Barton's searching for modern-day microbes living in this ice cave to learn how their ancient ancestors endured the Ice Age 650 million years ago. If you look on the edge of the cave, you can see all the particle dust that's got lodged in the ice. And it, it creates a surface that the microbes can actually live on. The cave runs beneath the glacier. Inside, it's four degrees below zero. Creatures that live in such harsh conditions are known as extremophiles. Barton takes samples of the microbes buried in freezing rock sediments at the base of the glacier. I'm looking for some sediments that might contain microbes that have never been exposed to the heat. So the thing we remember about these, these bugs is that they love the cold and they've actually evolved to live in those cold conditions. And because of that, if I was to take them outside right now into the heat of the sunlight, they die. It would be like taking us into the middle of the desert and dropping us off there. Barton believes this dark sub-zero cave can shed light on how microbes adapted to conditions during snowball Earth. The majority of surfaces exposed on Earth would probably have looked something like this. So we're looking at the kind of conditions that organisms that survived that period would have been living on. They're not just living on the ice, they're living in it too. Sunlight penetrates a few meters into the ice wall and that's enough for the microbes to flourish. We're still pretty close to the entrance right here so I think there's definitely a lot of sunlight energy and then enough for cyanobacteria to grow on. And they're probably in the ice. They're living in the ice right now.
The deeper Barton goes into the cave, the darker and colder it gets. But even here, life hangs on. This is a community that looks like cyanobacteria. They're incredibly resistant to all, um, all kinds of stress that you would put them under. They can survive it. During Snowball Earth, the ice was thousands of meters thick, enough to block out nearly all the sunlight microbes needed to stay alive. Barton finds similar conditions even deeper into the cave. Here, there's hardly any light at all. But even in this dim, icy world, she finds microbes thriving. So what we're looking at are microorganisms that have to adapt and generate energy when there is no sunlight. So what they do is they pull energy from the rock itself. They actually chew into the rock to get that energy. Outside, Barton examines her samples on a field microscope. She believes these modern cyanobacteria have a similar structure to the ancient microbes that survived the snowball earth. We're seeing cyanobacteria. There's a whole community living in that ice. Cyanobacteria really are these amazing organisms. They're very, very adaptive. They're one of the most ancient forms of life on our planet. They can survive some really extreme conditions. Cyanobacteria have evolved amazing survival mechanisms. If our cells freeze, they burst their walls. If they dry out, they die. But cyanobacteria have evolved a cell structure that prevents rupturing in some of the most extreme conditions on Earth. They've changed the structure of their DNA so it doesn't get damaged. If you were to take us and dry us, then you know our DNA would be irreparable. You do that to a cyanobacteria and you just have to add water a hundred years later and within a, a few hours it's starting to carry out photosynthesis again. Just as some could cope with dry conditions, others could cope with ice. As the ice rolled over them, most microbes died, but the hardiest survived. Over time, strains evolved that thrived in the cold and dark to become the ancestors of every living thing on Earth today. Everybody thinks about these global catastrophes like it's going to wipe out all life. And it's like, no, these microorganisms have been going through similar things for billions of years. And they're adaptive and, and, and they change. And then they, they fill the niche that's left behind. Barton's research proves that even in the most extreme conditions, in the ice, in the dark, life finds a way short of an object the size of Mars hitting the planet, you know, life will go on on Earth. And events that we may think are, you know, catastrophic, just simply turn over a new leaf and, and we start seeing a different form of life on Earth. The only reason we're here today is because life adapted and survived. But there's another puzzle. We're here, but the ice isn't. All that ice should have kept the planet so cool that it could never thaw again. And for 25 million years, it did. Then something extraordinary happened. <laughs> 